Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Irene and today I'll show you Dollar Tree makeovers. They are very different and I love all of them and I hope you like them too. So let's go ahead and get started. The first item I'm going to make away is this tabletop mirror. I've also bought a package of Dollar Tree glass marbles. You want to choose a set with several sizes of marbles as you'll need bigger and smaller marbles here. I'll attach the marbles using epoxy glue. Actually, I'm using welding epoxy here, it's not leaky and holds the marbles in place really well. I'm mixing a small portion of glue as per the instruction, applying equal parts of each component. I'll need just a bead as I won't be able to attach many marbles at once. I'm applying the glue to the mirror and attaching a marble beer. First I did this stand and it was pretty easy, but then I had to show miracles of resourcefulness. Each marble should be held still for 5 to 7 minutes while the welding cures, and in order to save a little time, I applied the welding over the marbles and then attached them, doing all this with only one hand, while holding the already attached ones with the other hand. Here you will have to spread your fingers at the most unthinkable angles, making intricate pirouettes in order to have time to use all the mixed portion of glue before it starts to harden. Not an easy task. I touched the marbles to the stand without any particular system, just where I thought it would look good, and I ended up using less than half a package of marbles to complete the mirror. After all the marbles were attached, I went in with some painter's tape and just masked off the mirror itself that I didn't want the paint to get on. Although the mirror stand was originally gold, I didn't like the shade of it, and so I planned to repaint it all the same. I spray painted it gold. This paint is my local one, but the best option I know is Krylon Gold Foil Metallic. It has a really nice finish. I'll leave the link for it below. I let it dry well, then remove the painter's tape, and we're done. I've seen candlesticks made like this on the Long Fox channel, I really liked how they look and I have long wanted to remake something like this. The mirror looks so nice and kind of unique thanks to this simple makeover. And I think it will look great in black or silver as well. The next makeover is of this Dollar Tree Toy Llamas, they are surprisingly cute. To begin with, I'm going to decorate the toys a little. I will make saddles for them. I'm cutting the saddles out of craft foam, you can also use fabric, leather or suede here. Since the craft foam I had was rather thin, I made two layers of it. I'm hot gluing a thin strip of craft foam around the waist of the llama, like a harness detail. Then I'm attaching a noble part on the llama's back and the second one right over it. I'll decorate the toys with a pom-pom ball fringe trim. I'm hot gluing the trim along the edge of the saddle. Adding it to the neck to hide the seam on the toy. And adding a second row of the trim around the neck. I just think it looks nice like this. I'm going to make candle holders out of the toys and for holding candles I'll use these little bowls, also from Dollar Tree. To attach them I'll make cutouts in the saddles with an X-Acto knife. And after that I'll cover all the trim and craft foam parts with acrylic varnish to make them more stiff. Also, varnish makes the surface smoother, which is good if you're going to spray paint metallic. 
was very generous with the varnish to soak through all the fabric parts and especially pom-poms, so that everything ended up being really tough, like plastic. After the varnish has dried, I'll attach the bowls onto the backs of the llamas. I'm using epoxy putty here as candles can warm up the bowls and so hot glue will not do here. And after that I'm spray painting the llamas silver. Here I'm using Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch spray paint. I love that it's self-priming, so no need to prime anything here. I gave them one layer, then carefully flipped them over and finished painting. I've decided to add some patina to the figurines. This time I'm using a black patina, you can also use thin black acrylic paint. I'm distressing the figurines a little, applying the patina over the eyes, the muzzles, the inside of the ears, as well as all of the creases. I'm applying the patina quite generously with a brush and then wiping off immediately with a clean cloth. The effect is the depressed areas have a darker color to them and the higher areas are the highlights. And all that is left is to put tea candles inside. I just love how these cute little llamas look in pairs. I also considered repainting them in bronze, but ended up using silver, just because I didn't have bronze paint on hand, although I think they would look great in bronze too. You can make such decor out of any toy animals from the Dollar Tree. I think horses or lions are great for such a makeover too. Quite a lot of artificial flowers from Dollar Tree laying around and I decided to make some wall art out of them. I picked flowers with different petals, bigger and smaller ones. First of all, I'm disassembling the flowers. I'm removing all the stems as well as the plastic middles, stamens and the like. All you need is fabric parts. When disassembling the rows, I had to make some efforts since the petals were hot glued together, but in the end everything worked out just fine. The main thing is to take your time. And I'm cutting all the fabric parts of the rows into separate petals. In total I've got four types of the petals. As a base I'll use two old canvases, as you can see my son practiced drawing on them when he was a small boy. You can also use pieces of plywood or any boards of a suitable size. I'm drawing a circle on them. And I'll start with the largest petals. I'm distributing them more or less evenly around the circumference and then hot gluing all the petals to place. I'm twisting each petal into a cone before gluing. I'm going to make something like a large chrysanthemum and these cones will imitate the edge petals. The guideline for gluing is the half of the circle which I drew, the edges of the petals should not go beyond it. The next row is smaller petals, here I'm using these white flowers, don't actually know what these are. I'm cutting them into quarters and also folding them in cones and I'm hot gluing them between the rose petals. Then I'll use the hydrangea flowers. They are small and I'm simply folding them four times. And the last ones are sacra flowers. I'm also folding them in four and attaching them along the circle. 
By the way, I haven't said in the beginning, almost all of my flowers are white, but you can use absolutely any color because they are going to be painted. And I'm making the second half of the flower just the same way. Then my experiments began. I have conceived making this wall art for a very long time and loved how beautiful artificial flowers dipped in plaster of Paris look like porcelain, but having tested it in practice in a, on a couple of flowers, I abandoned my idea. Plastic crumbled from the flowers at the slightest pressure, that is, the flowers turned out to be just super fragile. But then, on Pinterest, I found a chalk painted flowers. They look like porcelain ones, but do not break so easily. I decided to try this method. So, I'm taking 4 tablespoons of plaster, I also added a tablespoon of talc, I read that talc increases the plasticity of paint and therefore decided to add it, but it's optional. I'm mixing the plaster with a small amount of water so that there are no lumps. First I poured plaster directly into the paint and the lamp secured. I'm adding half a cup of white glue to increase the plasticity of the mixture and half a cup of a water-based paint. You can add a full cup of paint instead, this was actually the original recipe. I'm mixing it well and applying to the flowers. At first I wanted to dip the canvases into the paint, but the tray I found was way too small for my canvases and therefore I had to apply the paint with a brush. The flower turned out looking like it was really made of porcelain. The texture of fabric on the petals is not visible anymore, but at the same time the petals are bendable and the paint will not crumble from them at the slightest callous pressure as it did with plaster. I used pale grey paint leftovers, but you can use any color you like, I think pastel dusty pink would look great here. My next makeover is this plastic round tray. I'm going to repaint it. The first step is priming it, of course. Here you can use primer for plastic and I'm using a bonding primer. I really like it for this kind of Dollar Tree makeover. I've primed the inside and the sides. After the primer has dried, I'm painting the bottom of the tray blue. Since the color is quite intense and the primer is white, I'll have to apply as many as three coats to get a nice and rich shade with no see-through spots. I've decided to make the sides of the tray copper. The copper paint that I had was way too reddish or even pinkish and therefore I mixed it with browns to get a nice shade. And I'm painting the sides both on the inside and on the outside. I'm giving it two coats of paint. The tray looked much nicer already, but something was still missing. 
and I remembered that I had a beautiful copper brown colored gold leaf in flakes and I decided to use it here especially since the shade suited the sides very well. So I'm applying the gold leaf. First I'm applying a gilding glue in places where I want to touch the flakes and I'm waiting for about 10 minutes until the glue becomes transparent. After that I'm attaching the flakes. They were somehow hard to apply, for some reason they picked up a static charge and stuck to the box and in the end I just poured the flakes over the glue and pressed them down with a flat brush. I've made several copper spots like this. I'm using a white flat brush to polish the gold leaf. This brush is very dense and springy and thanks to this all the tattoos are perfectly smooth and polished. I'm shaking off the remnants of non-stuck flakes and the last step is to seal the tray with a shellac sealer. Let me remind you that gold leaves should be sealed with non-water-based sealant only. If you use the water-based one, gold leaf may oxidize and darken. Here I had a slightly unpleasant surprise. These copper leaves changed color a little and brightened after sealing and from noble brown it became corny gold. Here I tried to make it look a bit like a word map. Do you think I succeeded? I love how the tray looks with candles on it as flame is reflected from the gold spots and the sides. For the last project for today a lantern or actually two lanterns I'll be using Dollar Tree bamboo covers. There are as many as 100 of pieces in the package, I'll need 48 for a lantern and I'm selecting the straightest skewers from the package. I'm making marks on the sticks with a pencil, here I'm going to attach the sticks to the crossbars. I'm marking at 1, 5 and 10 inches. I'm making the cross hoops for the lantern out of wire. I'm twisting it over a paint can, cutting it off with wire cutters and finally hot gluing the tips together. You can also use Dollar Tree plant holders with hoops as a base here. After that I'm wrapping the wire hoops in raffia ribbon which I have on hand, you can wrap it in natural twine as well. I'm wrapping all the hoops and hot gluing the raffia from time to time to hold it in place securely. After all the hoops are wrapped I'm marking them as well. To do this, first I made a paper template. This is just a circle with the rays going out and I'm just transferring the marks to the hoops. So now I've got marks on the sticks and marks on the hoops, let's go ahead and connect them together. I had gluing all the three hoops to the first stick. These first sticks are the worst as everything falls apart so easily. You can tie them with a thin thread to make it work better, but then things will go much easier. After all the sticks were attached, I decided that I'd like to have more sticks and so added more sticks in between the existing ones. As you can see the construction is still very very flimsy and the joints need to be strengthened. To do this I'm wrapping all the joints crosswise on every hoop, tying the sticks to the hoops. 
I used the raffia ribbon again, threading it through a needle. By the way, it's very convenient to use a curved needle here, it works much better than a regular one. As a result, the frame acquires the rigidity and strength it needs. I've decided to make the second lantern pot bellet and for this I'll have to bend the sticks. First I'm also marking them with a pencil. To bend a bamboo stick you want to heat it strongly enough. To do this I'm moving the stick over a stove flame and then gently bending it to the desired shape and heating it just a little more to fix the shape. You will have to practice a little at first, but then things will go quickly. Work gently, the main thing here is not to force it, otherwise the stick breaks easily. When you are folding the stick over a fire, you'll just feel when it starts to give and don't hold it still over the fire as it will catch fire, you want to move it here and there. I've read that a heater gun is very good for these purposes and is safer to use, but I just don't have one. For this lantern you will need 48 curved sticks, that is about half a puck, just like for the first lantern. I'm making wire hoops, this time I will make 4 different sizes. I've selected the size by trial and error method and I made hoops of 3.5, 6, 7.5 and, and 4 and a quarter inches. I'm also marking the hoops. First I'm hot gluing and tying 6 sticks along the 6 and 7 and a half inch hoops. This will be the middle part of the future lantern. I've decided to decorate the lantern with wooden beads and therefore I'm adding a bead in the center of the upper third of each stick. You can hot glue them, but they hold in place pretty well as they are. Other than that, I'm doing pretty much the same as with the first lantern. I'm hot gluing the sticks and on the marks, here each stick has a bead in the middle part that is in between the hoops. And then I'm wrapping the junctions of the hoops and the sticks with the raffia ribbon and securing each stick with a knot. I've decided to add more beads to the lower part of the lantern and so I'm attaching them. Then I'm attaching the bottom hoop, which is 6 and 1 quarter inches. Since not all the sticks are curved enough, I'm attaching them in several steps. I'm hand gluing several sticks and tying them with the raffia ribbon right away, otherwise the sticks would peel off. Then I'm hand gluing a few more sticks and tying them and so on all over the hoop. Finally, I'll attach the top hoop, the smallest one. Here I'm hot gluing six sticks along the marks first and then I'm gathering all the rest of the sticks in between them, making a kind of a bundle and tying each of these bundles to the top hoop. After that, I'm wrapping the hoop with raffia again. The bases are ready and now I need to make bottoms for them. I'm cutting several circles out of cardboard, making them about half an inch larger than the bases. I'm marking where the base will sit and then I'm pricking the circle along the marks with a thick needle.
I'm placing the lantern on the bottom, directing the sticks so that they enter the holes and then I'm fixing the tips with some hot glue. After that, I'm attaching more cardboard parts over the bottom. I've decided to decorate the bottom with bamboo covers as well. I'm making two layers of sticks crosswise to cover the cardboard completely. You can cover the bottom with a rope as well, attaching it spirally. The bottom edge can be decorated in different ways. You can either add small pieces of sticks here or wrap it in rope or raffia ribbon. I did just that on the second lantern. I put another wire hoop on the bottom and sewed it to the base through the bottom. By doing this I covered the cutboard edge and at the same time the structure became stronger. The lanterns will need handles of course. To do this I'll use a few pieces of rope. I'm making loops out of the two short pieces, hooking them to the top of the lantern and hot gluing the loops and I'm wrapping all these areas with more rope to cover any undone ends of the rope. And finally the narrow lantern will also need a top cover. I'm cutting out two donuts from cardboard to fit tightly into the base and gluing them together. I'm covering the donut with stick scraps, placing them like rays going from the center. And I'm cutting off all the excess along the edges. Then I'm placing the donut onto a glass jar. Actually, I've chosen the inner diameter of the donut to fit snugly over the jar. I'm inserting the top part into the lantern. It holds well over the first hoop and doesn't fall further. A bit more wrapping to hide the cardboard edges and finally we are done! This makeover may seem a bit complicated, it really takes some time to make, but actually there's nothing fancy and the lanterns look really high-end, like those you find at Pottery Barn or Anthropology. Of course, you cannot put a real candle inside, it's not safe, please only use LED candles or fairy lights here. You can even hang the lanterns, the handles are quite reliable for that. And of course you can make them in absolutely any size and shape and you can make a whole bundle as they are super cheap to make, which is great I think. I hope you liked today's project, please let me know what you think of them down below. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!